Welcome to Sliver and Bite TV. What a journey it's been to create all of the French mother sauces. There's five of them. And I'm going to go into how I stumbled across it, why you should make them, because it is, it's rewarding to know something. So it's basic. However, it can take you places in your culinary journey that you wouldn't even realize. So the sauces were created or assembled rather by Auguste Escoffier out of France in the 19th century. He put together the most basic sauces that were able to branch off into many other dishes. So in front of me, I've made them all from scratch. It's the only way to do it. And also rewarding because you know exactly what's going into your food. So my first, my very first one I ever created was the Hollandaise. Obviously, definitely here in Australia, it goes on an eggs Benedict. So poached eggs drizzled over the top um, and that's on some sourdough, usually. Now you can transform that into a Bernays and that alone will service all of your meat needs and over vegetables as well. I was so surprised that it paired so well with asparagus and a little guilty pleasure of mine, the broccolini, amazing. Then, so that's our first one. Then my second one, and I wanted to create it because I wanted to do a deconstructed lasagna. So it's the bechamel. Also very versatile because it's essentially a white sauce. It's quite mellow but it complements so many dishes because it's mellow and it allows whatever you put it on to sing. However, complements it in the most warm and enriching way. I guess that's all the sauces. They are all hearty and comforting. So I put that on my Spaghetti bolognese, amazing. If you're not putting bechamel sauce on your bolognese, you're missing out. You are missing out. So that's our second one. My next one was veluti. So this one is made with a chicken stock. So you're starting off with a light roux. That is just your butter and your flour. You're not browning it at all because you want it to be light in its uh, coloring. And also it is a very delicate sauce. So you wanna make sure that you're not burning that butter. Um, this is amazing on, I did it on a chicken schnitzel. Oh my Lord, amazing. And again, vegetables. But then from the veluti, you can make soups. I made a leek soup with uh, the veluti as its thickener. And next level. Next level with its taste because you've developed the taste whilst you've been cooking it. So phenomenal. My second last sauce, I need to think what I cooked. It was the Espanol. It was the Espanol. Now, Espanol is, I think, going to be my saviour because I don't know what it is. When I do a roast and I go to make the gravy, it just doesn't work. I have a funny feeling it's the oil content. So, this is made with butter and with the mirepoix, which is your 
celery, your onion and your carrot. Also bay leaf and some garlic in there as well with some thyme. And amazing, beautiful, so smooth and just, it's, it's a, it's a ready to go gravy. It is just so beautiful. And you can make some dark soups with that one as well. Now, I would say, for me, that the tomate, which is the tomato base sauce, that's probably your most versatile. Once I blitzed it with the stick mixer, I put together some garlic, some basil, and some onion with some olive oil, browned that off, poured some of the tomate in with it, and it was an instant marinara, but not from a jar. I did some wrist holes with it, which is a meatball, and uh, it sung. There was a depth of flavor, and I appreciated the history of these sauces so much because I think whenever we're out and we see something foreign we may not go for it and you think it's easy to put together and bring back to heat a hollandaise it's not so respect for those people those restaurateurs out there that actually enjoy these base sources for their intention and that is to either flavor whatever you're cooking or the accompaniment of the sauce with whatever you're putting it with they're delicate sauces however there is a depth to them that you can actually taste because you're you're not putting any artificial additives or a dried herb in with it you're actually putting a stock in boiling it down extracting all of the goodness and the flavors out of the mirepoix and it is just phenomenal i never say never but if i've got the time i will definitely be cooking these to service my cooking needs. I'm certainly not going to opt for a marinara out of a jar because it's so easy. There is not a sauce here that takes any longer than one hour and 15 minutes, especially once you get going with it and you know what you're doing. It is, it becomes second nature. I was so surprised at myself how I created three of the five sauces today. No, I created four of the five sauces in front of you today. And it's only taken me, I, three hours. So, and I was filming some of it. So it took me a little longer than if I was just cooking it by myself. So. Do yourself a favor, head to either directly to the recipe that I've got here, or you can go to Just a Sliver playlist or the Five French Mother Sauces playlist. Get creating because you will be able to wow that special somebody or just wow yourself with a decent gravy or sauce to go with whatever you want. There is something for seafood, for red meat, for white meat here, for vegetables. So, and a lot of these, yes, it will alter the taste slightly, but you don't need to put chicken or beef stock in them. You can opt to go for a vegetable stock. So you're able to alter it whichever way you want because whilst there is that undertone with the the meat majority of the flavor is coming from the spices 
your herbs and the mirepoix and make your dishes sing. You won't regret it. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.